So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's a very special day. It's been exactly one year today that we first brought cows onto our property. See, we moved here in March. We waited about a month with all the craziness going on. We saw the grass starting to grow up and said, you know what, we need cows. Why? Because I don't want to mow 30 acres. Plus, that's what it's not here for. It's here to grow food. And the way that we've been doing it is we started with just three cows. Now we're up to 21 and we've been rotationally grazing, moving the cows every day, mob grazing, whatever you want to call it. But we've been moving them every day around the pasture. They haven't stayed in the same spot for one day. They've always gotten new, fresh grass. Some people say, oh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not worth the time. It's not worth the effort. But I want to show you the drastic differences that just one year in rotational grazing makes. You see, this is my neighbor's land over here, just on the other side of the fence. So we got Jordan right there. And the same guy that leased this pasture here also leased ours where Jordan's eating. You can see the pasture that has been run in the same system that our side was run. It's full of dandelions. It's full of dandelions. It's full of weeds. It's not very green. Now look at our side. Look at this. Look at this. There is a drastic, drastic difference. Now I just moved the cows here. Let's look where they came from. This is kind of beat down, but it's still very green. We left a lot. Now those dandelions are a great indicator of what's actually going on in the soil. Let me show you why. You see, when dandelions grow, they have, this is their main tap root right here. It likes to go straight down and then tries to break up the soil. Why is that? Because what they like to grow in is very compacted, hard soil. Why is that? Because nothing else really likes to grow there. Why? Because they like to have roots go this way. But with the soil really compact, you need a really tough tap root to go down and start to break it up. You see, the way that nature works is that it likes to be covered up. So it will put something or make something grow in an area where other things don't like it to grow. And when you have hard, compacted soil that's been trampled on, trampled on, trampled on, it's gonna put usually a weed, either a dandelion in the early spring, or when we get into summer, it's gonna be that awful goat weed, woolly crotton, whatever you wanna call it in your area. So again, this is the neighbor's field, and I don't know if it really does it justice. You can see all the dandelions start, starting to come up. Why? Because that soil's very compacted. That, those cows that are on this field here were on our land just a year ago. Now on this side of the fence, are we perfect? No, this is where the cows have grazed and we have patches like right over here. I'll come show you. See, we have patches right over here of where dandelions are growing up. Now what is this telling me? That the soil is more compacted here and that we might have to do a little bit of more work to help it grow back. But for the most part, I want you to look at our land. Look at this, you might be a little bit windy, but look at that. That is green, that is lush, that is great. Now I don't mean to rag on my neighbor, he's a perfectly nice guy, but it's just the difference in management styles. And you can see here that this is working. This field would have looked like that field if we didn't do what we did here. If we just turned our cows out, they'd look, it'd look exactly the same. We still have a couple, we have a couple. But what this means, what this is telling me, is that because we're moving the cows, because everything that we're doing, that this soil has loosened up drastically over a course of a year. I mean, still, there's still places. I mean, there's not, we're not perfect. We're nowhere near perfect. You're never gonna be perfect. But I can tell you something right now, it's better. And we're having grass grow up more, grass grow up better, different styles of grasses that you see out here. And it just in general, it's more grass. Why? Because when we can keep that grass in its growth stage and not take it all the way down to the bottom, it's gonna grow back faster. What that means for us, what that means for us here, is that we're drastically, actually for the area, drastically overstocked. But look at the grass that we have. We fed hay, we stopped feeding hay sooner. We fed hay much later than everybody else around here. So it's working. You see where we are in East Texas, it's about three to four cows per acre. That's the average stocking density. We have 30 acres here. Some of, some of it's the house, some of it's the yard. But right now we have 21 cows and two llamas eating our grass. By the stocking density of the area, we should really only have 
really realistically 10 cows that should be our maximum we have 21 here they're doing great they're doing fantastic why because we have enough grass here to feed them now if we did things the normal way where we just turn our cows out there'd be no way there'd be no way that we'd be able to have this many cows here where are they at they're down there somewhere there's no way that we should be able to have ruby scarlet and the rest of the gang here we'd really have to get rid of at least half of them in order to maintain our stocking rate and not get overstocked but you can see what they're doing they're eating it's actually a pretty wide range of grasses for this is what april 5th so they're getting a pretty diverse diet and it's green it's healthy this is where they came from yesterday and the main thing with the rotational grazing is that they're getting away from that right there you see their manure is you see it's covered in flies now and then what happens is in 12 days parasites are going to come out of there and if they're eating right around where their manure is and usually they will because that's where the grass is if if you just turn their cows out why because that's full of nitrogen and the grass will start to grow up there when if you just turn your cows out it still might look like that so they just want a little bit of grass see right there next to it that's what i'm talking about that's an old manure pat that they'd probably go for because they didn't want to eat right next to the ground but the problem is is they're eating right next to their parasites you see for our first year i think we've done extremely well why all the cows are healthy we haven't had to work them we haven't had to put them in a head gate we haven't had to put them in a chute nothing why because we haven't had to there's been it's been no stress been able to handle everything from the snow apocalypse to the heat of the summer no issues whatsoever the only thing that we do is we do give them a wormer it's not ivermectin i will not do that stuff i think that stuff is awful all we do is shackley's basic h soap put a little bit in their water and that will naturally worm them if they have any that's just to make me feel good probably because one they're longhorns they don't pick up parasites they just don't why because they're a more natural breed rather than all the other commercial breeds that have been bred to put on a lot of weight and a lot of meat these guys much different and then secondly they're not eating next to their parasites they're never doing that why we're moving them every single day even if you just move them every 11 or 12 days it would be a big big massive help and we just haven't had any issues i mean it's been easy it's been perfect i haven't gone out there you know having to try and shove medicine down a cow's throat haven't done any of that stuff why haven't had to and it's great why because we're moving the cows every day. We're moving them away from the parasites. I'm sure at some point something's gonna happen with one of them and we'll manage it. But this first year, we've, been, we've had them exactly a year. Zero issues, zero issues. And that's what I love. Very low maintenance, very low, you know, input. And there's no, basically no inputs because we made our own hay this year. Probably won't do that again, but we still have probably at least, I would say 70% of the hay that we need for next year or actually this year already here so we're going to be buying very very little we only fed hay for i i put them on hay for a while then i took them off but i took them off a little bit too early then i put them back on so we've only fed hay for about 50 days only 50 only 50 days that's unheard of the average people the average rancher feeds hay for 180 days look at that cost savings it's it's mind-blowing and what we did is we unrolled the hay and what we're and what we're seeing on the other side of the farm where we did that man the grass is really growing up a lot better but as you can see the cows are happy healthy gaining weight doing their thing and loving life i mean there's we're finishing our own animals here too so there's going to be no feedlot they're going to be on this their entire lives isn't this pretty isn't this pretty and the main thing, the main thing, there's no smell. There's zero smell. You see, I come from Southern California. We moved out here a year ago. And whenever we drive from LA to Las Vegas, there'd be a spot to where there was an old dairy in a town called Norco. And you knew that there was a bunch of cows there. Why? Because you could smell them from 10 miles away. I mean, it was awful. As a little kid, I'm going, what is this? That's not the case here, why? because we're managing it correctly. We're moving them away from their manure. They're not over oversaturating the ground with nitrogen. None of that's happening. Why? Because it's the most natural setting. This is amazing. But just so I can make my point, look at it again, look at it again. That's my neighbor's land. Those cows that were on this land were on our side of the fence here where Daphne is. Look at the difference. I mean, when we zoom in, you can really see it. You can really see it. Look at all the dandelions all over the field. I mean, it's covered in it. It's absolutely covered in it. 
And what does that mean? Again, compaction, compaction, compaction. Not helping, not helping. They're taking nutrients away, not putting them back. And then look at our side here. Full of green, full of grass, full of happy, 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 healthy cows. This is just, I mean, it's an incredible difference that only one year makes. And if that's what happens in one year, if that's what happens in one year, what happens in five years, what happens in 10 years, what happens in 50 years when I'm 77 years old, what is this place gonna look like? The grass is probably gonna be up to here. Zero inputs, no fertilizer, we didn't seed, we will probably seed this year. I actually know for a fact that we're gonna seed this year because I just wanna help with just a little bit more. We could just wait, the seed bank could just come back, but you know what? Why? I mean, it'd make for a good story, it'd make for a good YouTube, you know, thing that, oh, we never seeded. But if I know that I can do something to help the cows, help the land grow back, and it costs very, I mean, very little, because we're not going to put that much out. We're just going to put a little bit as an experimental thing, and if it works really good, we'll probably do quite a bit more next year. But for basically zero inputs, this is what our land has turned into. This is where the cows were. That's where they are now, full of green. This looked... This right here, this area here might look a little bit low because they just came from here, but I swear to you, it looked exactly like that just, what, maybe 12 hours ago. So if you wanna see what happens going forward and how much more that we can rejuvenate this land, how much more grass that we can grow, if this system really does work, I mean, if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video like this, when you see the two differences, is probably worth a million. But if you want to see what the future has in store, hit that subscribe button down below. Ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And drop a comment if you like, alright? Till next time, see ya.